guys welcome back to the channel finally hopefully by the end of this video i know i said it last video but for sure this video the 240 should be ready to take to the track um there's only a few things left on it nothing too major if you guys saw last video we took the old vlsd that was inside the car out of the car and i have a welded diff ready to swap in but i needed to change the axles in the car so i have the brand new axles uh, i had ordered those last video but they finally came in so i'm gonna change both axles and we're gonna get the new diff in so that's gonna be the first thing we do for this video there's gonna be a couple other things we do to the car in this video i gotta smoke test the motor and try and figure out why the car is down on power I gotta paint the front bash bar and finally show it to you guys. But that's pretty much it. The hard part for this video is gonna be the diff because I gotta do it by myself basically. Oh, we're also gonna be installing gauges this video for sure. If Junior doesn't lag on me. Yeah, let's get straight into it. I'm gonna uh, take the axles off of the car because the diff's already out. If you guys saw last video, get the new ones in. Get the welded diff finally inside this car. both axle nuts out there's nothing i have to disconnect on this side all that was holding it on the outside was this collar pin you gotta remove this is the hardest part and then there's like this like uh locking collar uh for the actual collar pin and then the washer and the actual axle nut itself so this is a 36 mil this is the only thing that holds in the axle on this side now i can literally just push this axle in and the whole axle should just drop out so i gotta go underneath the car right now slide out both axles and i'm gonna slide the new ones in and uh, attach them on this side Oh my god, there's so many spiderwebs under here. This is what an axle is. Uh, so this one on the driver's side, this one's still good. This one doesn't have any tears in it and stuff. I'll just clean it up and I'll have it um, ready just in case I break one at the track. This one should still work. As for this one, this one's completely gone. There's a big tear in the boot right here. Got the old axles out, and let me show you guys the new axles we're gonna be throwing in. I started opening the new axles, and then I opened this one, and I saw grease inside of the box. You shouldn't see any grease inside of the box because these should come completely sealed. So everything on this side is good, but then if you come on this side, the cap opened up in shipping. So I'm gonna clean all this up. Hopefully it didn't lose too much grease, and I'm gonna see if I can press this fitting back into place. I don't know if it's gonna wanna press back. I don't think this place is supposed to move this much. And this one that has no play at all. And I'm pretty sure if I take this uh, zip tie off, this will stay intact. But I'm pretty sure if I take this zip tie off, maybe that's why they put two of them on this one because it was leaking. I'm pretty sure if I cut these zip ties, this is just going to pop off because there's a spring in there. Probably going to have to go swap this out right now. Change of plans. Fuck AutoZone. I don't know why I keep buying parts from them. Anyways, I have to return both these. These are two completely different axles. So on this one, you can see it has the flange type. And on the other one that AutoZone sent me, this one's a complete circle. So that threw me off. And on the front on this one, it has washers. Just like the OEM one that I had. But on the new one, it doesn't have any washers. Even the, the bad one on that side had washers. So check the reviews on AutoZone for this axle. And everyone was saying that this axle doesn't even fit. Even though AutoZone says this fits my car, it doesn't fit my car. It's too long. This axle is way too long. So if I even tried to install this one, it wouldn't work. I was gonna try and install them like that. Maybe um, sometimes they change the flange, but they're the same part, but I don't even wanna risk it. I checked O'Reilly's and O'Reilly's has both axles I think that I need. I'm gonna see if I could go pick them up, um, but this will probably have to be done another day. And then this one was all leaking. I pressed it in a bit more, but I gotta order the right axles. I already ordered the new axles from O'Reilly's. I gotta wait for those. They come in like two days. So hopefully this weekend, uh, David can help me and me and him will get the axles in the diff installed. Hopefully the axles from O'Reilly's are actually the right ones. I'll check back in probably in like a few days when I come back and hopefully David's here too helping me. All right, we back. I don't know what the last thing I recorded was. I was about to change the axles on the 240, but I got the wrong axles from AutoZone. Shout out AutoZone. But I got the right ones now. It's been like a week or something from the last clip, but hopefully today we get the axles in the car and the diff inside the car. I don't give a fuck if this video is an hour long. I'm not posting this video until the 240 is ready to drift, so. I'm about to go to the garage right now and start working on the 240, but first I'm gonna give you guys a little sneak peek into the next video. I went ahead and bought a new truck. Uh, this is the only hint you guys are gonna get, but I'll show you guys the truck next video. Need some work and stuff, but finally got a bigger, better truck. Stay tuned for next video. It's gonna be a banger video. I still can't believe I came up on this truck and I'll tell you guys all about it next video. I finally got this truck running. I'm going to take it for a test drive and next clip you guys see we'll be back at the garage and we'll be working on 240. I just wanted to give you guys a sneak peek into the next video. Hopefully I can get the diff in by myself. That's what I'm worried about for today. 
I'm not even gonna lie to you guys, it's already the next day. I forgot why I couldn't work on it yesterday. Some shit came up with the truck, so I was working on the truck, but finally, I have time, I have a couple hours. I have the new axles here. First things first, I'm gonna take these axles and I'm gonna compare them to the original axles that were inside the car. So hopefully they don't auto zone me and they're the actual right, correct parts I need. I had opened them when they got to my house and they look like they're gonna be the right part. I just gotta measure the lengths on them, make sure everything lines up. Hopefully I can lift the diff up by myself and then I could get the fluid in it after. I'm gonna just try and time lapse everything. Maybe film like a little Tommy F, yeah, ASMR style kind of install, but axles and diff are the plan for right now. I don't know if my car's fucked up and like I have a weird Frankenstein rear end or something, but even these axles don't match up. So let me show you guys what I'm talking about. So that axle and that axle are the new ones, obviously they're nice and shiny. So this is the blown axle down here and this is the good axle. So this one's the old axle, but it's still good. So it looks like both of my old axles are the same size as this new axle. This new axle that I bought, which I don't know if it's a driver or passenger side, I'm gonna check the part number on it. This one, as you can see, is a good amount longer than both of them. So this one, I have no idea what's wrong with it. Maybe the last owner um, didn't know what the fuck he was doing and maybe they, these are swapped out at one point and he just bought two of the same axles and it worked. I'm not sure, but this is what happened with AutoZone last time. So I guess maybe one of the axles is supposed to be longer. So I'm gonna check the part number, see which one's the one that's supposed to be longer. I'm gonna try and install the two new ones, obviously. But if for some reason that one's too long and it doesn't fit my car, I'll return that one. And then I know that I just need to buy this part number. And this is the one I'm using for both. The two axles that were in it look like it was double of this one, if that makes sense. If this one doesn't fit and it's too long, I'll just use the good one over here that wasn't blown to begin with. And I use one new one, whatever. I guess I'm gonna have to do that. I'm gonna try and install the two new ones first and see what happens. Uh oh. All right. This is either gonna be really stupid or really fucking smart. All right. All right, almost there. I can't see where the fucking bolts are though. Oh, that's what she said. Oh shit. I got it. I got it. I got it. That's how you do it, boys. Heavy ass piece of metal, bro. God damn. Need a pillow. Oh yeah, I got to, I got to take an nap right now. I got the diff in. That shit was actually pretty easy, like five minutes I got it in. I'ma tighten up these four bolts, uh, the ones back here, and I'ma tighten up these two. I'ma torque them all down to spec, and then the diff's in, and then we can move on to getting the axles in. The diff is in, that was pretty easy, it wasn't too bad. Now let's get the axles in. Hopefully it's not too hard to get the axles in. The only thing I should have accounted for, which I'm kind of fucked now, is this diff is welded. And so it hasn't had any oil in it for a while. So it's really hard to spin this shaft right here. Um, I could probably break it loose with a hammer or something, or try and put like a screwdriver inside of the drive shaft and try and spin it. Uh, but I need to break this loose, but it's really hard right now because it has no oil. So hopefully once I put some oil in it, it loosens up and it breaks uh, loose a lot easier because I'm gonna need to spin the axle to be able to get to all the nuts. It's gonna be really hard uh, to get to it. So yeah, let me get started on this and let me get the axles in. I got the axle in, it was really, so this is the one that was longer. So if this one fits, I think we're good. Okay, finally, everything's installed. Let me get some bolts on these and tighten everything up. I already have everything uh, hooked up, but I just need to put the bolts on. But I can't spin the drive shaft underneath to get to the rest of the axle bolts. Uh, so the problem is gonna be the welded diff has no oil in it, so it's really hard to break loose and turn over. So I'm hoping that if I put some oil in it, then I could be able to break it loose. I probably have to put a wheel back on and spin the wheel. 
Um, I was looking for a pump I had to be able to put the fluid in, but I don't have it. But I do have these that I bought for my truck a while ago, and it's the, it's the 75W90 I was gonna use. It has limited slip, temperature control, all that, so. This is gonna let me put the oil in the diff without having to use a pump because of the bag that it's in, so shout out Valvoline, bro. Came in clutch. Ain't nobody look out for me, like, past me, for real. I bought that like six, seven months ago, probably when I bought the Suburban, but I never switched it. So let me put some oil on the diff and hopefully I can break it loose to get to the rest of the axle bolts. Crazy. The diff has fluid now, and then I put the wheel back on so I could actually manually spin the diff. I broke the diff loose now, and now it should have oil. It should be nice and looped up. I should be able to just spin the drive shaft now. Hold on, pause. No diddy. I should just be able to spin the drive shaft now. That way I could get access to all the axle bolts around the actual axles. Let me get the rest of this done. All right, right now I have another problem. I can't take out this stupid sway bar bolt. I think I gotta go back home and get a cutoff wheel so I can cut it off right here. I'm not gonna use the sway bar anymore and there's no way to take this out besides cutting it literally. I'm gonna cut this one off, cut it off on the other side and then I can put the wheel back on and then the rear should be done. We're so close, I just gotta get these stupid ass bolts out. I don't know why they were designed like that but let me figure out how to cut these bolts so we can get to the front. Damn, bro. Whoever designed this stupid ass bolt is a fucking idiot. I really need to get a cutoff wheel for my big grinder because this little wheel took forever to cut it. But it's just hard because all the sparks are coming in your face. But now I gotta go cut the one on the other side. So wish me luck. Everything in the rear of this car is done. We have a welded diff now. We have brand new axles. I don't have to worry about all that anymore. All that's left is the easier uh, bit, which is troubleshooting. And I gotta figure out why the motor's not running good. So I'm gonna mess with everything and just try to get the motor to run a little bit better. And hopefully the car finally idles good and runs better. Cause I've never really messed with it, but I really need to right now because that's basically the last thing left. And then we're gonna be taking off the bash bars and stuff like I told you guys, so fuck. It's like 7 p.m. right now. I don't know if I'm gonna finish today. I'm gonna try and get as much done as possible. So I'll be right back, I'm gonna go eat. I was gonna smoke test the motor, but I'm way too fucking tired. I took off the bumper. I already loosened all the bolts on the bash bar. I took off the fender braces. Let me show you guys that because I didn't show it to you guys last video because tomorrow morning I'm gonna paint those because it's just bare metal. So I'm gonna paint them, show them to you guys how they look painted. But let me show you guys what Henry did from Zaku's Tech. But I'll show it to you guys better tomorrow, but I just wanna show you guys how it looks like before and after. These are the fender braces. These attach my fender to the actual frame of the car. They're different lengths because like I said, he custom made these, so shout out him. You can't really tell the lighting is really bad, but bro, that looks so badass. The bumper's only held on by four bolts, but thanks to this, it's solid. It's not going anywhere. In the next clip, you guys are gonna see me painting the bash bar, and I'll show you guys how it looks like painted. Cause I need to paint it, cause it's just bare metal. So I gotta clean up. This is the worst part of working on cars: cleaning up. I'll see you guys in a bit. to edit we're back in the garage working on 240 last clip we painted the bash bar that's pretty much all i was able to do because i had work but the bash bar fuck i forgot the fucking bash bar damn i'm gonna have to go get the bash bar later but damn how the fuck do i forget the bash bar anyways the bash bar is painted all that's left to get this car ready for the track are two things the most important thing is i gotta get the motor to run a little bit better because like i told you guys before i think there's a vacuum leak the car's down on power and then by the end of this video we also need to install gauges on this car so i can check my water temperature and my oil pressure i'm just gonna smoke test it and hopefully 
I don't even know if I have smoke. I should have baby oil though. This is the one time I'm hoping that I could see a huge leak because the car is really down on power and I'm really hoping it's just a vacuum leak. I hope it's nothing major, so. smoke tester hooked up and I hooked it up to the brake booster line so I took the line off of the brake booster because this leads straight into the intake manifold before me and David were uh, smoke testing from the intake right here um, but it takes a lot longer for the smoke to get to there so I'm gonna try this time from the brake booster we haven't tried this yet before I even touch anything I'm gonna just run smoke through the system and see where it leaks from hopefully I see a big leak uh, because then that would be the easy fix I only have a little bit of oil in this hopefully it's enough um, if not I'm gonna have to go get some baby oil my battery's for sure gonna be dead, so hopefully it has enough juice to at least turn this on. If not, I'm gonna have to go get another battery. Let me try and turn this on and see if I can get smoke through the, through the intake manifold. The battery can't even turn on the smoke tester, so I gotta go get a battery. I gotta go get a jump starter to jump this battery. At least I get to go pick up the bash bar, so I'll be right back with a new battery. This one should work, and now hopefully this will turn on. I think I found the problem. I've been running the compressor for like two, three minutes and I don't see any smoke around the rest of the intake manifold. I only see smoke coming around right here and you can just see all that smoke coming out. And as you can see, that plug right there is ripped and you can just see all the smoke coming out of there. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna plug that up again. I think that's why my car was dying. I think that's why I was low on power because that's a fat vacuum leak. It's probably why the car was still able to drive, uh, but on diesel it would die. So. If it's still idling a little bit funny, I'm gonna try and mess with the TPMS, the throttle body positioning sensor. I think you need a multimeter to kind of adjust this, so I'm gonna look at a video and see how to adjust that. Let me plug this up and let's start the car, see how it sounds. I got a new plug on there. Worst case scenario, it comes off, I'll know what to look at, and I'll just plug it up again, but I still got the smoke tester hooked up. Let's see if it leaks. I always knew my car was gangster. I gotta take off this uh, coupler right here uh, so that I could put a plastic bag over it because the smoke is just going through here and then the smoke escapes from the air box and it just smokes up the whole engine bay so I can't really pinpoint anything. But I don't really see anything, but I still wanna take this off just so I know that the smoke's being contained in this area. But when I was pressing this, check it out. Hell yeah. <laughs> smoke weed every day. I didn't take off this coupler because this pipe was hella hard for me to put in. If you guys ever saw that video, we did some crazy things to get this to stay. We melted zip ties and all that, so I don't want to break this loose, so I didn't take it off from there. Instead, I just took off my air box and I kind of made it loose, and I just put a bag with a zip tie. So, I think this should make enough of a seal, so. Let me turn this on again and see if there's any more leaks. And then this way, it'll test the smoke all the way up to the MAF, because if there's a leak before the MAF, it doesn't matter, but anything past the math is where the car could uh, idle rough and run rough. So uh, this wasn't enough. It was still leaking smoke a lot from this side, but the good thing is there was no smoke on the rest of the motor. So there was a little tiny bit, but I think it was just all the smoke from here drifting over there because I would blow it away and I wouldn't see it come from anything on the actual intake manifold. Uh, so I think the rest of the motor is good. And if there is a leak, it's not gonna be a major leak where it's gonna shut off the car how it was before. So the last thing I gotta do is I gotta get a battery tied down because my battery's just holding up like this. I gotta cut off this metal, this is really dangerous, but I'm gonna take this off and I'll put a battery tray, but that's, I'm not even gonna include that in the video. I'm gonna just put like a metal or plastic tray at the bottom, drill it in and then put the battery in a tie down. That's basically it. I'm gonna put the bash bar back on and maybe put the bumper back on. But I got a message Juniel. He's the one that's going to help me install the gauges. So I'm going to see if he can help me right now. If I have to wait till next week to bring the car to him, I might just upload this video and I'll do the gauges next time. Next video, we're going to be getting the truck ready. And then the truck's ready, the trailer's ready, the car's going to be ready. And we're going to be going to our first track day. Let me get this bash bar on and let me maybe try and start the car, see how it sounds. And then um, I'll let you guys know what I do with the gauges, if we're going to be installing this video or not. Let me hit up Juniel. <laughs>
finally the car's off jack stands. It's been on jack stands for like a month and a half, bro. The car should be ready to drive out. The battery's dead, but I also got my daily right here. I'm gonna go pick up Edgar and then he's gonna take me back so I can bring the 240 because I can't drive home two cars at the same time. I'm really excited to see how it's gonna feel with the water diff and the new axles. We're gonna be working on the truck next video and then we'll install the gauges. The gauges are literally the last thing that this car needs and it doesn't even need them. It's just, I wanna be able to read my coolant temperature. The NX1600 digital cluster that I put inside, the heat isn't accurate. Um, so I don't wanna take it to the track without actually knowing how hot my car is getting. Um, so we'll do that next video. We're gonna be working on the truck next video too. So stay tuned, next video you guys are gonna be able to see the new truck I bought. But let me get this car out of here, show it to you guys in the sun because I know it's been a minute since you guys seen it and let's see how she drives. What's up, man? What's up, man? What's up, guys? Let's go get the 240 at the garage. Number says yours. That shit dead as hell, huh? Yo! The surprise guess? What the fuck? I guess I shorted out. Let's try this again. Come on. Can you disconnect the jumper and put it back again? Number says yours. Hell yeah. Come on, stay alive, come on. It's running even worse than when I fucking parked it in here. I think it's misfiring, let me look at it. The brake booster line that I was putting the smoke in to the motor, I never reconnected it, so that's why it was fucking running like shit. Sounds a little bit better. I mean, it runs like, it's running how I did before. But the car's finally on the ground. We're gonna take it out right now for the first time in like two months. Finally, the car's back at the house. I haven't seen this car on the street in like two months, bro. It drove fine. I mean, it drove how I always drove. Um, doesn't drive the best, but it drives fine under load, so later I'll figure out that issue, but right now I don't want to tear into it any deeper. I just want to drive. After that first donut, I smelled like something burning, and I was like, ah, like, I'm not going to try again, um, just in case. And I think it was all the power string from the power string flush. It got onto the headers, and it was like smoking, but that's going to be it for today's video. Uh, basically, the car's ready for the track. The only thing left is the gauges, and we're going to be doing that next video. If you made it this far in the video, we're going to be working on this next video. That's my new truck. So you guys get a sneak peek at it. Next video, we're gonna be doing all the maintenance on that to get that ready to tow this car. If you enjoyed any moment in this video, please consider subscribing. Drop a like, really helps out a lot, especially for a small channel like mine. Stay tuned for next video. Next video, everything, the truck, the trailer, the car should be ready to take the track. So see you guys next time, later.